Hello, Savannah. Thank you for tuning into WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. Hello, everybody. I am back live in the studio. I have been gone so long. I'm so glad I'm here. This is my calling in life to be on the radio. I love it. You have just tuned into Real Estate Real Talk with myself, Julia M. Spencer. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm glad I'm here, obviously. And obviously, I have been gone again for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks at a time. And first off, really big shout out to Tom Murray, who was sitting in for me for a couple of those weeks. One week was a recording, so you didn't have anybody. It was just empty crickets here. But we are back now. So... All relaxed, all rested, just came in, flew in from Mexico last night. And before that, I was two weeks in Germany where it was cold. And what are we going to do in our show today? Well, let me just give you a little update on what the show is about and how I structure the show. You have me all the way until one o'clock, by the way. And we're talking here about real estate in the middle of the week, middle of the day, you're supposed to be working and maybe having a lunch break right now. And I'm teaching you a couple of things, hopefully. And so, and as I'm doing this, I'm actually looking at my new playlist. I love going to Mexico and picking up songs on the street. Actually, this next one is going to be one of those songs I picked up on the street, literally. I'll tell you after the song where, but it's not in English. So hopefully there's no bad words in there because I don't speak Spanish so well yet. I know I should learn it by now, but... In any case, this show, we're going to be talking about real estate, but because real estate is so boring sometimes, I guess I should say, and dry, and literally dry to the fact that I have to stop talking and actually drink some water, but we do it because it pays our bills and it's cool, and having houses is cool, and learning about the whole process of uh, home ownership, being a landlord, being a, a tenant, and especially in the market now, It's good to have a couple of insider tips and tricks, and that is what this show is about. By the way, if you do not catch this show in its entirety, you can always go to my YouTube channel and check out my videos there. Also, my radio shows are recorded, and they will be broadcast there. I do also take recommendations from anybody that actually wants to me to research a specific topic or get a specific interview person right here on the show. As I mentioned, I'm in downtown Savannah. Near Troop Square. In fact, if you know where the offices are, you can look through the window and see me. And that's pretty much what we do. We discuss things and check things out and hopefully get to the bottom of things. And on today's show, I have a really awesome topic, actually. We're going to talk a little bit about it and we're going to talk about it on the next couple of shows as well. But I am thinking in the process, discussing with realtors buying property in Mexico to retire in or just kind of use or even as an investment. So what does that process look like for people that are coming from the United States or any other country? That is what we're going to be talking about. And that is what this show is about today. But first, of course, since it is Mexico, we're going to play some, I don't know what this even is. Is this reggaeton or reggae or what is it? But it's pumping. So turn it up. I'll be right back after this. Stay on. Don't go anywhere. And that was Singapore <laughs> from, who was that from? That was a good track. Um, no, 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 I can't find it now. Ah, no. any case, it was from El Alpha and Shell Produciendo on their El Andrade album. And I actually picked that up walking past the taco shop, believe it or not. So it was more like a disco taco shop. So I loved it. <laughs> any case, thank you so much for being with me here for... Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. By the way, my background track's always ministry. Lay Lady Lay, one of my old electronic music tracks from back in the day from their Filth Pig album. And on today's show, though, we're talking about real estate and we're going to talk about real estate in Mexico. I did have the pleasure to meet with a realtor in Mexico and literally in the city of Playa del Carmen, which is about an hour south of Cancun. It's got a really vibe expat community from the United States, actually from all over the world. And it's very 
kind of like a central place. Like if you're staying in the downtown area, you don't really need a car. Taxis are readily available. You're next to a beach. It's a gorgeous, beautiful beach with beautiful turquoise waters. I mean, there's a big tourist group or groups that come there all the time. So it's a touristy destination, kind of a little bit, has a lot of Savannah, actually. It's a little bit more compact than Savannah, but it's it's a lot like Savannah. So it's not really like leaving home because you're going basically to your other home. So I did meet with a property, a rental and a real estate management and real estate company to speak about buying property there. And I spoke with a lady named Nelly, and she kind of gave me the rundown. Like we didn't actually look at properties yet. We're just trying to get an idea of what that would take and the prices. Obviously you can look at those online, but as everybody who's an investor or if you even own property here in the United States, you would be a little bit apprehensive. And the very first question I get from anybody that asks me, why do you go to Mexico so much? Is it safe? That's always the second question is like, is it safe? Well, you know, I mean, it's not everywhere safe here in the United States either. So you kind of, you have to know where to go and you have to know what not to do. And that's the same really with any place. And I believe Mexico in many places is actually starting to get a little bit safer than here, right here in the United States. But be that as it may, everybody wants to live in a warm location by a beach and maybe have their cost of living go down quite some. And this is maybe an option. So I'm starting to investigate that. I want to basically do it from the beginning to end, purchase the property there and kind of give you the bad, good, and ugly and the everything in between, basically. So... For starters, if you're moving to Mexico as a U.S. citizen, the maximum amount of time that you can stay at any one point in time is 180 days. In fact, most tourists that come through the border at Cancun or any of the other places will get a stamp in their passport or a little note saying that they can stay 180 days. That's the max. It's, it doesn't have really weird rules like the Schengen countries have where you can only stay 180 days within a year or anything like that. You can actually leave after those 180 days for a day or two and come back and stay another 180 days if that's what the immigration agent says that you can do. And a lot of people do that. They don't actually never apply for a residence card or get any kind of permanent residence there. They just kind of travel back and forth, stay half a year in the United States, maybe in the summertime because it gets kind of hot down there. The other six months, they go down to Mexico. So the important thing, of course, to know is that as a foreigner, you cannot own any property in your name within 50 miles of a border or a sea line. So if you're planning to buy that beach condo right there on the beach, it's never going to be in your name. However, being as entrepreneurial as Mexicans are, and I always admire their entrepreneurial spirit, they, of course, have figured out a way around that. And that is via getting a trust for foreigners set up. Now setting up this trust, that trust will then own the property and you will be basically the beneficiary of the trust. That's usually how it's done. There's a little extra cost associated with setting up this trust and approximately a payment of about an extra $500 a year. So you kind of have to plan that into your closing but also as a constant maintenance cost going on into the future. Now, this last trip, I actually spoke to somebody who is a resident there and has property there, but from a different country, not from the United States. And he said that there's actually another way that you can set up a sort of a bank trust of some sort, which is a little bit different, and your name is not on that either. And that's going to be completely anonymous. So that is something I need to check up on because that is not something that I heard from this realtor. So I'm getting my information from a few different places. So we're figuring this out as we go. The next thing we talked about with this realtor was closing costs. So how much does it actually cost to close on a property if you were to buy it there? And the closing costs are pretty similar to here, 5 to 8% approximately. Actually, maybe a little bit higher than here. It depends on, of course, what kind of deal you have set up with the people that you're buying the property from or with the realtor, what kind of negotiation you have gone through. And you might be purchasing a property that isn't even built yet. So this would be a negotiation between you and the developers, which is actually quite common. And at this point of my conversation with Nelly, 
she actually said she was going to send me a closing guide. So the closing guide for how that whole process with getting a lawyer and everything else works with foreigners, that is something that I did get from her. And if you are interested in that, I would really, really recommend that you contact me. The best way to contact me is through my YouTube channel. You can leave a comment on any of my videos there. It's just Julia M. Spencer. And I will be glad to send that closing guide to you. And then you can read it as well. And you can, I can also put you in touch with this particular realtor. So the next big question I had for Nelly was about credit. Of course, a lot of us might be going to Mexico, purchase property with cash because they're liquidating a property maybe here in the United States or have some retirement funds, some savings and things like that. But how does that work if you actually don't have money? So how do you get credit? Her answer to this was that most people, most people that purchase property in Mexico do it with cash. However, credit is possible. A lot of people that get a credit to purchase property there get it here in the United States and transfer the money that way. They get like a personal credit instead of a real estate backed credit because most U.S. banks will not back property in Mexico. However, again, I'm taking this another step here. I recently sold a property in Germany. I don't know if you guys have followed my channel and my shows. It was my parental home or maternal home, I guess. And I sold that to a U.S. citizen. And he got a loan from the United States. And he's the one that basically got this personal loan and he transferred it over to Germany to purchase this home. I don't know exactly how that went. That's something I need to ask him about. But I do know that the bank, I believe, was ING. ING Bank. That's who financed this whole entire deal. And it was a quite a significant amount. So if you have good credit, I guess, or maybe if you have a larger down payment, that's something that you can consider. However... Most people buy in Mexico with cash, which is something to plan for. So if you have property that you want to sell first, that would be the thing to do to start looking. And as well, the other implication that I got from talking to her is that the universal rule of real estate still applies in Mexico or anywhere in the world. You purchase property and you wait. You don't wait to purchase property because all the prices down there are going up because people are starting to get wise to the idea that maybe retiring in the United States is not the best place financially speaking, especially for people with limited means or a fixed income. And there's a lot of really nice complexes around Cancun and any other place in Mexico where developers are specifically targeting complexes aimed at people that want to retire in Mexico because they can finance their projects that way. There's plenty of people that have limited means that just can't afford to live in the United States anymore. And it's a readily sourced to cater to, basically. We can get to prices in a little bit because obviously I'm looking in a tourist destination, which is going to run, of course, quite a bit higher than if you're going maybe out in the country a little bit or in a small village and purchase property that might already exist and you purchase it from a, another private person. So there's a whole big discussion topic here that we can't get to quite yet on this show. But I guess let's take a little bit of a break. On today's show, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about purchasing real estate in Mexico. I did some research here while I was there last week and the week before and spoke to some real estate agents there. And we're going to talk about location and development projects as opposed to properties that have already been built and kind of the pros and cons and some of the information that I gathered from that. But again, as we always do on my show, we have, of course, at the bottom of the hour, a couple announcements, but we're going to also play some music in between. So please stay on. Don't go anywhere. I'm trying to see what kind of song we're going to pick here next. I had a couple that I played that were just awesome. I think I picked that up somewhere as well. So stay on. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. And today's topic is purchasing property in Mexico. I'll be right back. Stay on. Don't go anywhere. And thank you for staying with me here for Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. Live in the studio today in downtown Savannah near Troop Square. It's a pretty cool square, by the way, if you've never been. Check it out. 
Also, it's a beautiful day out there. A little bit chilly, but extremely sunny. I love the sun. In any case, we're talking today about purchasing property in Mexico, in case you're so inclined. I've had a couple of episodes of my show in the past where we talked about different kinds of options for retiring if you have limited funds or are on a fixed income. And this is just one of those options that I wanted to talk about. This one is a little bit more concrete because we're talking about literally buying a property in Mexico, which is what I'm thinking about doing here in the next near future here. Let's talk a little bit about location. I have a couple more minutes actually before the bottom of the hour where we play some announcements. So let's talk about location. That's a quick one. So location, of course, is everything. We know that through real estate. If you listen to my channel and you paid attention, you know that I talk about this all the time. Location, location, location. It's the most important thing in real estate. So the same goes with the properties that I'm looking at here in Playa del Carmen in Mexico. The closer to the beach, the better, of course. But then you also have to kind of like take a step back because obviously the closer you get to water, you will have additional issues with your property. You have sand, salt, of course, natural disasters that can happen. Hurricanes affect the area down there in the Yucatan Peninsula just as much as they do here in Savannah, Georgia. So those are the kinds of things they have to worry about. More inland, of course, is always better if you are in a hurricane situation. Of course, something to consider that we have here in the United States, of course, is flood insurance and a special disaster insurance. I'm not sure exactly how that works in Mexico, but that's something that will definitely be investigated by me when I pick a place. I haven't picked a place yet. We're just talking like theoretics here. And so location is everything. And of course, if you're picking a place in the tourist destination, most tourists will go to where the actual tourist attractions are. The same as goes here in Savannah, Georgia. Most people that want to go to the beach w are looking for Tybee Island. And most people that want to go party on River Street or absorb the downtown scene, the, go, the bars, the dancing, the live music, which I love, that's the kind of people that will look for downtown locations. So if you're purchasing property kind of in between or in Pooler or out in, I don't know, Richmond Hill, Ridgeland, I don't know, and then you're kind of like questioning the your income stream basically a little bit but then again you know those properties will also be cheaper and so that is something to consider so what Nelly told me my real estate agent in Mexico is that it is always advisable that if you're purchasing a property that you might not want to live in the whole year round that it's not going to be your retirement property yet but you want to purchase it now use it sometimes and maybe rent it the rest of the time that you try to get it in a central location being in the center of town or in a place close to the beach. That is definitely something that people will look for. And they will, of course, pay a lot more rental prices for those kinds of locations. On top of that, if you're a foreigner or a tourist, basically not even a foreigner, but just any tourist, there's a lot of Mexican tourists that actually come to this destination as well. A lot of people will look for newer places. People prefer to stay in newer places. So newer developments, brand new appliances, maybe remodeled places, that is kind of like what people are aiming for. And if you think about it, that's probably what you would be looking for as well if you're going on a vacation. So consider that when you're purchasing property, of course, maybe your personal needs aren't as high end. And I certainly would be okay living in an older place. And I have a lot of old places. But on vacation, I'd like to get a newer place. So that's exactly what you need to look for. If you're not planning to live there the whole year round yet, then try to get something a little bit on the newer scale or maybe something that isn't even built yet. And that brings me actually to the bottom of the hour. After the announcements, we're going to talk a little bit about pre-sales and what that actually means. Because we spent a lot of time talking about pre-sales and new developments in Mexico and how to purchase them. And there might be an option for a cheaper price back after this. So please stay on, don't go anywhere. Announcements are forthcoming. WRUU 107.5 is a proud community radio station bringing Savannah the best talk shows, music, and entertainment with Global Soul. We here at the station want to thank you, Savannah, for listening, donating, and inviting us to be a part of the community. 
Because of you, we've been able to engage with the community at events like Juneteenth and Earth Day. We're always appreciative of opportunities like those, and we look forward to seeing more of you, Savannah, in the future. Tune in to Way Left of the Dial every Monday afternoon here on WRUU from 4 to 6 p.m. for Music with an Edge with Tom. It's Way Left of the Dial every Monday afternoon from 4 to 6 p.m. here on WRUULP 107.5 FM. As part of its celebration of the 20th anniversary of its Opus 2223 Chance Pipe Organ, one of the finest pipe organs in the region, St. Peter's Episcopal Church is featuring Kathleen Turner, the organist of St. Peter's Episcopal Church, for a concert on Saturday, April 20th, at 6.30 p.m. with a wine and cheese reception beginning at 5.45 p.m. St. Peter's Episcopal Church is located on Skidaway Island at 3 West Ridge Road, Savannah. Yes, it is that time again to support WRUU through your vote in the Connect Savannah Best of Savannah poll. It's easy. Go to the Connect Savannah website, www.connectsavannah.com, and click on the Best of Savannah voting image. Read the instructions and then scroll down and click the image labeled Media. Vote for WRUU in the Best Local Radio category. And if you see a favorite WRUU radio host, please vote for them as well. Vote now as voting ends at 11.59 p.m. on March 6th. Thank you for listening to and voting for WRUU in the Connect Savannah Best of Savannah poll. You're listening to your radio station, WRUU, which is presented by people just like you, people from your community. The voices you hear are your neighbors, co-workers, and other Savannah residents. Therefore, WRUU is your community radio station. So won't you please help by donating whatever you can afford to help your neighbors stay on the air. Go to WRUU.org and support your local radio station with a monetary contribution of any amount. Again, you can support your local radio station at WRUU.org. Thank you. And thank you so much for tuning in to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. There's our station ID there at the bottom of the hour. And on today's show, we're talking about buying property in Mexico. Some good tips I picked up on my trip here and wanted to share with you. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Location is everything. That was our last topic that we left off with. Let's talk about pre-sales because this is one of the things that I actually never even considered when I purchased property, but this is maybe something I might do new this year or, you know, this coming 12 months. We'll see. So Nelly, my real estate agent in Mexico, basically said that a lot of people in order to save money to purchase property in Mexico by pre-sales that means that a development company will envision a project and have the plans architectural drawings or whatever ready in a specific location and they will pre-sell the units in there so it might be an apartment complex or a condo complex of 20 30 50 maybe 100 units and they will sell them in stages of course before the building is built the price will be the cheapest and they will sell maybe a third or so off for a very cheap price. And the point, of course, is that developers get their funding this way. And so instead of going to the bank and building the building and selling it for whatever the final price is, they get the financing from the people that pre-buy these properties. Now, to me, quite honestly, that's a little bit risky because you're sending money for something that isn't built yet in a country where you don't live, you aren't a citizen, and it sounds a little bit to me like timeshares. So this is questionable. So I asked a lot of questions about this, but let's just get to the basics and then my questions and her answers. So one of the things that she said is that and if you were to proceed like this, a down payment would be about 30%, and then you can set up monthly payments. So the payment... You can do a payment for as many months as the project will take to be completed. You can split it up into six months or 12 months or however long this project is going to take to finish 
till its completion, but you will get the cheapest price this way. Now, after maybe a third of the units are sold during the construction, they will sell the next stage, and that next stage will be, of course, more expensive now because some of the project is already finished. And then some units will be held back, of course, for the very final stage, and they will be the most expensive ones. So, so you go in there with your 30%, you make a down payment, you are in contract, everything will be negotiated. And by the way, talking about the contract, the real estate agent that I spoke to was a buyer's agent. And what she explained to me is that most of the real estate agents in Mexico, or at least in that area, are buyer's agents and not seller's agents. So what happens then? So you basically are in contract and there will always be delay. And there is accommodations and contracts for these delays that sometimes go anywhere from 30 to 90 days. And of course, it all depends on what the contract says. And my question to her, of course, was, I don't speak Spanish. How do I know what the contract says? And she says, well, you know, you have plenty, plenty of time to bring the contract to the United States, have it translated, get some Spanish speaking person to look at it for you, analyze it for you, ask questions. There was never going to be a rush or any kind of urgency to be pushed to sign anything, unlike uh, maybe a timeshare presentation or something like that. So the next question, and there will be delivery dates, obviously, and there's going to be accommodations for changing these delivery dates, depending on what the development process is. Because, of course, with any development, you don't control the weather. There might be some issues with delivering of materials and things like that. So delays are quite common, is what she said. Another thing I was asking about is if I were to purchase, like, say, a condo in a full-service complex, basically, that I want to personally use maybe three to six months out of the year, but the rest of the time, how do I go about renting it? And she said that her real estate company actually works with a property management company that manages properties and they do basically everything from the advertisement on all the different platforms to the cleaning, to the maintenance, to everything. However, of course, all this service comes at a price it can be anywhere from 25% to 35% of your income. So again, another one of those things you got to think about. If you do long-term rentals, it's going to be, of course, cheaper. But if you have a full service, basically, set up where you have a property management company that does everything. And, and there's different packages as well, is what she described to me. So some things might be included, or you might be hiring your own people to do the cleaning. So that will depend on what the fee is for this property management. But in general, 25 to 35%, which is actually quite high, is going to be the price that will be paid for property management. That being said, though, knowing that I am a short-term vacation rental host here in Savannah even, or used to be actually, I'm seasonal now, you get to make up that difference in the increased rental costs for short-term rentals versus the long-term. So again, you got to do your math, you got to run the numbers, see what it looks like. And of course, you have, as always, 45 days after and offered to finalize the contract, basically. The next thing that I asked about, which was a really big question for me, and it has to do with Mexico as a whole, safety, security, of course, but also how safe is it to send your money to another country like Mexico and have some sort of guarantee that it's maybe not even increasing value, but definitely not losing in value. In other words, what I was talking about is in the 60s, 70s, you know, everybody in the 80s, even everybody went to Acapulco. That was the place everybody wanted to be. There was beaches. It was beautiful. And now, of course, nobody wants to go there because the drug scene has taken over. So that is not a place where you would want to have had property because it would very much decrease in value at this point in time. Are we going to that same place in the Cancun, Playa de Carmen, Tulum area? Is that something that I need to worry about? sending my money to another country that it basically just poof goes away and her answer was she was actually not even upset that I asked that question being that she's from Mexico but be basically said that there is of course a lot of investment by the government being done in that touristy area there is a airport that's being built in Tulum it does not accept international flights yet but in March they're supposed to be starting to accept international flights 
In that Tulum airport, there are actually seven spaces for specifically private jets that were approved. On top of that, the government of Mexico has been and has built a train system now that pretty much goes around the entire Yucatan Peninsula. Not all of it is delivered or finished yet, but a very significant portion, namely the one to the eastern side, it's a Mayan train. And the, the tracks are actually on the website. And you can see that the northern part of it is completed. The next part of it will be going south to Playa de Carmen and Tulum. And so that is a significant investment to have invested in a train system, the mine train, basically, t for tourist industry. On top of that, Cancun is building a huge bridge right now from the touristy hotel zone to the main part of Cancun right now. That bridge is going to be huge and it's going to be super well for, again, for tourist development and for bringing people to the area. Basically, 70% of infrastructure investment right now in the Yucatan Peninsula does go to the Cancun area and other tourist destinations. So what she said to me is the government is putting so much money into these areas right now that they're not going to just let that money go to waste by allowing drug cartels to come and take over the areas again. Of course, as you know, everything I listen to from real estate agents, I understand that it comes from a sales tactic, but I also understand that you have to take a certain kind of risk to make money. So real estate is no different than any other business. And I'm willing to bite into sour lemon for you guys and tell you kind of how it goes. The next couple of questions that we talked about were actually about developers. My other worry, of course, was what if I spent 30% on a unit and send that to Mexico to a developer to start developing? Or and they're already developing maybe some sort of complex and then putting my 30% down payment. How do I know that that developer isn't going to just take the money and run and just leave the project unfinished? And that was our next conversation. So we're going to talk a little bit about that after a break song. And I'll be right back after this. So stay on. Don't go anywhere. We're talking today about purchasing real estate in Mexico. We'll be right back. Stay on. Don't go anywhere. And I'm back here with Real Estate Real Talk. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today we're talking about purchasing real estate in Mexico. And I have about 12 more minutes till the top of the hour. Don't know if anybody's going to be here after me, but in any case, I'm here now. So we're talking about purchasing property in Mexico. And one of the questions that I've asked the real estate agent there was, what about developers that basically take your down payment and never built anything and run with the money? It's not unheard of, maybe not here in the United States as much, but other countries have different rules, different ways they do business. And of course, you know, everybody wants to make a quick buck. So her answer to me was that all developers that real estate agencies work with have background checks or get background checks. And the realty will request the resume of the developer and to check that they have a background and experience. The relays, of course, as I mentioned earlier, are likely hurricane and material de deliveries and things like that. But once you are on a contract, the contract will not change. So even though it's Mexico, the process is pretty much straightforward. And she also mentioned to me that developers that have a little bit of a resume already, a track record, have already built complexes in the area that had a set delivery line and have delivered according to that timeline or haven't gone very much over that timeline. They're very sought out by the realtors and also are the ones that are recommended to the buyers. So the real estate agencies, of course, know that if they sell something that is never going to be built, that they will get a bad reputation for selling property that isn't existing yet. So they will do their homework in order to not get a bad reputation themselves. So, of course, you have to do your homework. There is no elimination completely of risk associated with anything in life. So that is the, something to think about. But it's also very important to work with a real estate agency that has the proper licenses to sell real estate in Mexico. And you can ask about that. And you should ask about that. 
and they also are backed by a brokerage that has the same licensing and has maybe been in business for a long time. So you can get some reviews and talk to others that have purchased property through them and get your information that way. It's always good to do your homework, obviously. The other thing that she talked about is that obtaining residency in Mexico is actually much easier when you buy property there. You can actually immediately apply for property residency and that of course is something you can do once you obtain property in Mexico and you can apply through that through Mexican government and then you can basically live there forever and you don't have to go every 180 days out of the country. There are lawyers that work with the realty specifically on that. They will get all the paperwork together for you. Of course, you should always check your information with local lawyers and verify everything. But this is very important to know because a residency is these days actually in the touristy destinations quite sought out for people coming from countries that some people can't afford to live in anymore as I mean United States as well as some of the European countries as well. One last thing before I close my session here on buying property in Mexico. I asked about the maintenance costs and specifically because I'm looking at a full service condo in the complex what would be the HOA fees or the condo fees. And she said it's basically $2.50 per square meter. So do your calculation. It depends on how large the property is. And if you have a small little studio that's maybe only 50 square meters, I believe that's 500 square feet, your price would be around $100 a month. So that's quite reasonable. It's not out of the ordinary. I've seen way, way higher in places like las vegas new york city and places like that so it's reasonable and of course the other thing that the realtor told me that developers of course offer larger discounts if more of a down payment is being made and last but not least everybody knows the good developers so that being said i will release you because if you had any kind of interest in this kind of topic and you're looking to purchase property somewhere like Mexico, I am sure you're going to go to Google right now and see what there is available for what prices. So my price range, not particularly high as of yet. I don't want to spend that much money in a foreign country, but I could see myself buying a little studio or, or one bedroom close to the beach. And that would be completely fine with me if it was full service rented out by the management company the rest of the year when I'm not using it and I would be completely happy with that. So I'm working towards that. Bear with me. I'll give you more information as we go along and hopefully you and I will learn something together or at least I'll make a mistake and you won't make that mistake again. So that is what my goal is for this show. And that brings me to the end of my show actually. Thank you so much for tuning in for Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. And I believe we did play all the announcements. Yes, we did. And it looks like Gypsy is here. Yay! So we do have musical migrations right after the show. It goes from 1 p.m. till 3 p.m. She plays some cool music, so you should really stay on. And I am really glad I'm back in town. I'm going to be live here for the next couple of weeks and hopefully share more information with you. If you have any questions, specific comments, suggestions, good, bad, ugly, anything, I take it. The best way to reach me is go to my YouTube channel and leave a comment on any of the videos. The most recent ones will pop up on my feed and I will see them and I'll answer them and hopefully I can get in touch with you. Oh, and you can also go to my website, juliamspencer.com and send me a message that way as well. And there will be a contact form and we will get your questions answered. That is why I'm here. So hopefully you have a great Wednesday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your week. You were listening to Real Estate Real Talk. My name is Julia. I'm Spencer and I will be back next week. Have a great Wednesday. Bye-bye. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliamspencer.com.